There was huge interest in the 2006 Championship. History was in the air. From the moment Cork had retained their All-Ireland the previous year, the talk was about a possible three in a row. A feat not achieved since the same county's success in 1978. Manager John Allen and his players refused even to discuss the possibility of a rebel treble, but a place in the record books beckoned. Cork would be relying on virtually the same team that had won back-to-back -back All-Irelands. Showing remarkable consistency, they started powerfully with a big win against their recent rivals, Clare, to reach the provincial decider. This would be that most traditional of Munster finals, Cork tip in Thurles, birthplace of the GAA. Opponents Tipperary had a familiar face back in charge. Babs Keating had led them to All-Irelands in his previous spell, and his return raised expectations that the county could avenge the 2005 defeat. And the 117th Munster Hurling final for 2006, that is, gets underway. A 75th time that these two counties have met in the decider. And straight away it's Tipperary trying to gain primary advantage here. And Conor O'Mahony drives it away down the field, switches inside, runs on there. Fitzgerald trying to get inside, kicking it off the goalkeeper. Donald O'Cusa getting in the way there of Dermot Fitzgerald, denying him a certain goal chance. Blistering start here, ran all the way through, uncertainty at the back. And Dermot Fitzgerald just got by Dermot O'Sullivan, but was uh, very grateful to see Donald O'Cusa come out. Owen Kelly still given the job of taking the freeze. That's a very good start to Pereira trying to apply the pressure early on. Cork time to come to grips with it. Held onto there by John O'Brien from Toomey Vara. Inside towards Fitzgerald again, breaks away towards Lara Corbett. As he did in the last match, he's cracked another! Two goals in two games for Lara Corbett! Well, again, misunderstanding at the back by Cork, but credit to diagonal running across of Lark Corbett, picked it up beautifully and swept it in past Donald O'Cusa, and Tipperary have made a dream start. Back here, Cherry O'Connor, over the bar. Cork's first score. It's a flying start to this match. This is Brian Murphy. The Bright Rovers player linking up with Chonogo Halpine, sweeping it back downfield once again. Eamon Corcoran trying to bat it down to a colleague. It went loose. McCarthy got there first. Then Joe Dean, 45 metres out. Paul Kelly was after him, but left him loose. And Joe Dean puts it over the bar, and it's a second for Joe Dean. And Cork have eaten into the Tipperary lead. There's only one between them. That's where Cork were showing their ability to scrap, their ability to play as a team, working together. And when they do that well, they do it probably better than most around. Ronan Curran here, keeping it away from Jero Grady. Knocked down here well by Ben O'Connor. Keeping it on the ground to Niall McCarthy, on his left-hand side, miss hit. Still gets it in towards Kean O'Connor. It runs to Brian Corcoran, to Dean, chance to bat it. Runs loose, swept outside, and swept in. And it's Brian Corcoran who's got it. Twelve minutes gone, and Brian Corcoran, after all the hesitation in the Tipperary defence, gets another goal. His sixth goal in the championship. This should have been cleared, it wasn't. Dean back across the face of goal. That's where they should have got it out. But that's where Brian Corcoran was at his most decisive. Lethal finish and the number 14 cracks it home, and Cork lead by 1-3 to 1-1. One, one. The response from Tipperary, however, is impressive. And John O'Brien gets the point, his first of the afternoon, to narrow it to a, just a one-point game.
This is John Carroll. Needs to get into this game. Runs on there beautifully. Kelly! Good save! Double on Cusack, denying Owen Kelly. Both full back lines under a bit of pressure. Owen Kelly shows all his strength here. A little snapshot, probably just the right height for Don Logan. A nice, sharp save. Well, Tipperary showing that if they get good primary ball into the inside forward line, they can cause problems. That's Redzor O'Grady. Beautifully taken down here. It's Kelly inevitably. Outside here to John Carroll. Hitting it quickly. Off the post and over the bar. Good point. John Carroll, good response there by the Ross Gray player. Yeah. Owen Kelly involved. David O'Sullivan, pressure applied at him. Help coming in there from Pat Mulcahy. Team captain this year, of course. Still Mulcahy. Loose player ahead of him. That's Tom Kenny. Cross to Timmy McCarthy. One of those who failed to score against Clare, but did a lot of good things. Ben O'Connor. This time he measures it to perfection. Over the bar. Great score by Ben O'Connor. Two between them again. Again, they angle that ball across. Brian Murphy has read the intentions. Owen Kelly arriving late for duty. Murphy getting there first. Did he turn around and take too many steps? The fans thought so. Tipperary fans, mind you. That's Ronan Curran. Across towards Ben O'Connor once again. Taking Paul Ormond out with him. Next challenge is going to come in from the other Paul, Paul Kelly. It's Timmy McCarthy now. Hand passing it to a loose player. It's Tom Kenny once again. This time freeing it forward towards Ben O'Connor. Coming in at an angle, what a shot, what a goal! It seemed almost impossible from the angle at which he was approaching Brendan Cummins' goal, but Ben O'Connor has cracked in another. And Jared, that's the team play of Cork at its best. Timmy McCarthy hand pass to Tom Kenny, on to Ben O'Connor, and even though he doesn't look to be running that freely with that injury, crashed the ball into net when he got the chance. Great goal by Cork. Possession regained by John O'Brien on towards John Carroll. Little race for this one, facing back towards his own goal as Pat Mulcahy. He's left it there to Lark Orbit. Lark Orbit reached inside to Fitzgerald. Oh, it comes off the goalkeeper. And an amazing intervention there by Donald O'Cusack, who once again denies Dermot Fitzgerald. That's the second time in the game so far. Yeah, Joe really should have been a goal. Lark Harbour did very, very well here and a beautiful pass inside. Great vision. And Dermot really should have put it away. But Donald Logue did well, stood his ground. Bounced very dangerously. John Gardner all the way off the stick of Brendan Cummins and up and over the bar. Here's Jerry O'Connor again. This time fumbles. This time it's taken up by Paul Kelly. And this time Paul Kelly lets fly and puts it over. He'll be remembered for the seven points he got in last year's Monster final. Well, that's a start. And it means there's only two between them. At least two minutes of stoppage time will be played. And it's 2-6 to 1-8, and it's Tipperary. Again, trying to engineer something, and Dermot Fitzgerald this time says, I stood my ground, and that should be a free the other way. I wouldn't be surprised to see him go for a goal here, John. He might. I think he's going to go for it. He's happy to put it over and level the game, and they are level for the first time. And Owen Kelly has got five points. All of them are from freeze. <laughs> Niall McCarthy dragged back, free to Cork. Any little indiscretion like that's going to be penalised. This, once again, here is a lovely takedown by Niall McCarthy. Then a little collision immediately afterwards. And Joe Dean comes out to take the freeze. Joe's shot going left and then curling in over the bar. We were right behind it. It was heading outside and the wind then curled it in right between the posts. And advantage Cork started the second half. I think it's very important to Tipperary get the next score and get you know get back into impose themselves in this game do they want to win this monster final because they just started the second half very lackluster 
Broken down once again here. Tipperary trying to gain the edge, and it's John Carroll coming thundering through here. Oh, Halpine's after him. And that's over the bar. Good score. Tipperary will feel they needed that badly. First of the second half. Huge one downfield, it's one against one. Coming across to take Brian Murphy, needs the goalkeeper. Donalo Cusack, out to a loose player, Ronan Curran. They work it once again in measured fashion to Tom Kenny. Big one, into the inside forward line, two inside there, no great width. Well covered there by Eamon Corcoran. Gets it out here, but uh, Paul Orman could be in difficulty with Ben O'Connor present. Into the corner he goes. Taken out there, looking for a free player. Brian Corcoran gets the shot in, gets the point. It's an excellent score. A goal and a point for Brian Corcoran. Tom Kenny challenged there by Paul Kelly. Low this time towards Ben O'Connor, runs beyond him. Jerry O'Connor trying to make life difficult for Paul Ormond. Stands his ground well. He's a strongly built fellow. Up to another strong fellow on the 40, Redzer O'Grady. Breaks inside towards Owen Kelly. Trying to skip away from the challenge of Brian Murphy. Over his shoulder. That's a beauty! The levelling score! The first from play by Owen Kelly. Seven for the day. That's left behind there by Fanning for Joe Dean. And Joe Dean seizes on the chance and puts it over the bar. Five points for Joe Dean from five shots. John Gardner again. Tom Kenny trying to control it this time. Paul Kelly was coming in. Kenny still. Mulcahy angling it across here. Joe Dean trying to get first run ahead of Declan Fanning. Trying to do a little dodge. Trying to deceptively take his way in here. Swinging it beautifully and over the bar. He's a master of that. Remember the semi-final against Clare. He's just knocked over his sixth point of the afternoon. Cork 2-11, Tipperary 1-12 in points, Cork 17, Tip 15, and as I speak, it's eaten into once again, and it's Lar Corbett. Well, he hasn't scored for a long time, but it's a goal and a point now for Lar. And don't anybody tell you that the Munster Championship still doesn't mean as much as ever. For the 30 players in action right now, it means everything there is, and there's five minutes left, and there are two points between them as Maloney tries to set up a chance here for Benny Dunn. Letting fly, and he's put it over the bar, and there's just one between them. This is Eamon Corcoran kicking it away into space, just to put the pressure back on Cork. The defending champions leading by one. Into the corner it goes towards Dermot Fitzgerald. The other Dermot, O'Sullivan's after him. Trying to make a better angle. Inside dangerously. Saved by the goalkeeper, and Owen Kelly is once again denied by Donald O'Cusack. Pressure on Eamon Corcoran, bats it, Orman comes out from corner back, spills loose towards Joe Dean, needing a support player. Ben O'Connor towards Jerry O'Connor, trying to work his way through, looking for something from the referee. Comes back out here once again towards the new man in, Kieran Murphy, under pressure, drives it high, it's over the bar! What an amazing substitution! Breaks through, Joe Dean stopped by Brendan Cummins. And the referee is going to throw the ball in. That was another late chance there for Cork, and in particular for Joe Dean. But credit Brendan Cummins, got down really well on this one here. Joe Dean is deadly in those situations, a little flick. I think it was a bit of a... Yeah, Ben O'Connor pulled a wild stroke there on Durham Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald is down. Oh, the referee, Dickie Murphy, blows, and that's it! Corker once again, the Munster Hurling champions. That's the 50th time they've achieved that. A very notable honour for a wonderful team, a wonderful group of players who play so well as a team. It's Cork 2-14, Tipperary 1-14. So the Monster Cup is retained by Cork and they make another little piece of history. Title number 50.
The county given the best chance of stopping Cork was old rivals Kilkenny. Manager Brian Cody had reshaped his team. With a formidable blend of emerging young talent and established stars like Henry Shefflin, Kilkenny moved comfortably to the Leinster final. The champions were hot favourites, but opponents Wexford had saved their best performances in the previous two years for their clash with the neighbours. Could they pull another top display out of the hat? Would it be enough? It's a bit messy in the early stages. Good block down. Well recovered by James Cha Fitzpatrick. First point for the Ballyhill Shamrocks man. Well, a good score there by James Fitzpatrick, made by John Tenson, made a great run from the puck out, and um, I was surprised that Damien Henry hit it straight down the middle. Nice work by Nolan, cutting inside. The call is for Mitch. Mitch has it. Two Kilkenny defenders around him. Has to come back outside, lays it off. Fires Stephen Doyle. Wexford using the hand pass to good effect. Sending it high and sending it over the bar. They really had to work very hard, but finally Rory Jacob opens up Wexford's account. Breaking ball again. Dermot Kerwin didn't like the uh, challenge. It's going to be taken by Declan Ruth. Scored two points against Offaly. One of the more experienced players slating side at the moment in his 10th championship season. Certainly has plenty of height and he has the accuracy. Good score. Level for the first time after 13 minutes of play. Michael Rice beginning to blossom here on the wing. A little bit more prominent. Nice ball inside. First Martin Comerford bearing down in goal. The pass inside is pulled out. Oh, what a finish by Henry Shefflin. Beautiful, beautiful early. What combination. Comerford, the height was an advantage. He sought and found Henry. But look at this. First time pull. Damien, the great Damien Fitzhenry. Harley saw this. Absolutely scintillating hurling from Kilkenny. Rory Jacob. Change of the direction over towards Stephen Doyle from Aula de Bala. Noel Hickey has his path to goal blocked. Another crossfield ball. Well gathered superbly by Rory McCarthy. Can he find room to shoot? It's in there. The Kieran Kenny was fouled and it looks like it's going to be a penalty. But just watch this again. McCarthy gathered it. I think it was Owen Quigley that was coming inside as well. And it was Owen Quigley that was fouled. And it's Damien Fitzhenry that has come out from his goal. We saw Davy Fitz from Clare do this before, way back in 95, in the Munster final against Limerick. 11 years later, it's Damien Fitzhenry. First half against Kilkenny. Sends it over the bar. Well, a little bit of an anti-climax. I think he slightly slipped maybe when he picked the ball, but, um, you know, he had every intention of going for the goal, but better to get a point than have it stopped by the Kilkenny players. Darren uh, Stamp is waiting for it, but it's uh, Declan Ruth that's in the thick of it. Defending himself well is Owen Larkin. And passes it back for as Michael Rice. Good effort by Rice. Again, just dropping in, and Damien Fitzhenry, with his full back line a little bit exposed, bats it out. Comes... To Shefflin! It should have been another goal. Owen Larkin set up Henry. And rather unusually, Shefflin misses again. JJ Delaney is first to the ball, despite uh, the great work of Rory Jacob. Good ball fires Eddie Brennan. Launches this one. Inside is Henry Shefflin! Martin Comerford is there too. Damien Fitzhenry did come off his line. It's Comerford. Fitzhenry is still not there. And it's over the bar. There's not just a concern in the Wexford full back line. There's downright panic when the ball is dropped in quickly. Comerford and Shefflin between them. Tearing Wexford apart.
There's trouble now again as Eddie Brennan bears down on the Wexford goal and lashes that over the bar for his second point. Well, you can see why Eddie Brennan is back in the starting 15. He's regained the form that gave him an all-star back in 2003. It's a scramble over there, which Richie Kill did well to keep it in. Good play here by Doyle. Flicks it inside. Fares Michael Jacob out in front of the Cusick stand, sends it over the bar. Son of Mick Jacob, Wexford's very first All-Star back in 1972. Started against Offaly but lost his place for today's final. But uh, maybe showing that he really is anxious to get back on the starting 15. Good score. Henry Shefflin. Good work again by Rossiter. He's leading by example, the captain, from all at the ball. Down towards Rory Jacob. Trying to skip away from Danica Cody. Three to Kenny, four to Kenny after him. Still Jacob, shot, brilliant goal! It's the goal that they needed, and they needed it badly. Rory Jacob took off on a fabulous run. It's the only way to take on the Kilkenny Cats, is run at them, and this he did. Danica Cody was after him. In comes Tommy Walsh. They couldn't stop him, and neither could James McGarry. Fabulous oh, kill. Brilliant goal altogether, Marty, and then, um, you know, when the, when the chips came down in the last couple of metres, he had a presence of mind just to hit it one-handed. Very difficult to hook, just to hurry out in front, and a great goal, and Wexford back in it now. This is James Charles Patrick having a lash and having a successful one. His second point, this Leinster final. It's a good response. Race for possession again between Eddie Brennan and Dermot Lake. Brennan stepped over the sideline. Martin Comerford to drop in the same. Damien Fitzhenry comes out, stopped on the line by Doc O'Connor. And that would certainly have finished this contest. Comes back outside for his Martin Comerford. Uses the long grip to send that one over the bar for his third point from play. Corner forward from O'Loughlin Gales in Kilkenny City. But an anxious moment here for Wexford. As this ball dropped in, Damien Fitzhenry was under pressure, came off his line and for the second time batted it out. Doc O'Connor just barely keeping it out. More pressure. Henry Shefflin, hit a fair shoulder, turns onto his left and sends it over the bar for his first point from play. Goal and six points for Henry Shefflin. 114 for Kilkenny. Comes down towards James Cha Fitzpatrick knocked away. Pressure just relieved momentarily. And sent back by Richie Parr. Good score by the substitute. And his father won an All-Ireland medal, and of course, uh, Richie, most talented forward. Down to our Stephen Doyle. Did well to get it. Leaves it back once more as far as Mossy Mahan. Chance here for Michael Jacob. And it swings just inside the post. Third point for Michael Jacob. He's done well, actually, since being introduced. And it gives Kilkenny just a six-point advantage. Is this ball sent in? McGarry did well. And concedes the 65. Shot from Michael Doyle. Just keeping the uh, Kilkenny goalkeeper on his toes. Here's the reverse angle. And McGarry had to be on his toes because this was dropping in. Good save. Declan Ruth. Dropping this one in, needs a connection, gathered, there's a chance here, referee says no foul, and it's clear, comes back outside, oh, great defending by Tommy Watch. That's the sort of championship hurling you would expect. Fabulous play by the left half back, and then, with great intelligence, puts it into the path of Henry Shefflin at the far side. As Kilkenny go for another score, this one is dropping in. Over Damien Fitzhenry's crossbar. At this stage, I think uh, Wexford have given it everything, but they're not going to change that scoreboard at this very late stage. Another ball dropped in towards Tommy Walsh. 
It's there for Rory McCarthy. If he can get a touch, there's a chance of a goal. Scored by Michael Jacob. Well, I wonder down in Wexford why Michael Jacob wasn't started. 26 points to 18. It's an eight-point victory for Kilkenny. And certainly for Henry Shefflin, who scored a goal and seven points. The goal after 19 minutes set uh, the journey out for Kilkenny. Full-time score here in Croke Park. Kilkenny, one goal and 23 points. Wexford, two goals and 12. So Kilkenny moved smoothly into the quarterfinals and straight into some unfinished business. On the way to reaching last year's All-Ireland final, Galway had won a thrilling semi-final against the Leinster champions. Now they were again drawn together. Galway had come through the qualifier rounds, scoring 12 goals in three matches. But how would they fare against their opponents, rebuilt after 2005? This time the venue was Thurles, where Kilkenny had established an intimidating record, including a 19-point demolition of the same opponents in 2004. Michael Kavner, former All-Star. Distribution is not great, uh, and here comes Ger Farher. Galway hoping for an early score. Nice, easy point. A nice, easy, familiar style of Damien Hayes. Level after just a minute and about seven seconds. One and All-Ireland club with Portumna on St. Patrick's Day. Down for his uh, centre-half back, John Tennyson, who was impressed in the league and indeed the championship so far. Again, the distribution not a great one. David Ford lays it off, fires Alan Kearns. Kearns goes for the point and it sails over the crossbar for his second point. Well, he's a man who scored four goals and two points against Leash. So it's not just on the training field that Alan Kearns is producing it at the moment. Charles Patrick intercepting, powering his way through. Has to go back outside for his Derek Ling. This one is dropping in, and uh, Liam Dunahu can do very little about it. Over the bar. Level for the third time after eight and a half minutes, thanks to the Erlingford star from midfield, all star in 2002 and 2003. Trying to kick it forward was Cahill Connolly. And a foul there by the Galway man. You can see things are getting a little bit heated here. And the yellow card produced. Yeah, an interesting, Marty, to see Chaff Fitzpatrick taking these long frees. Normally, DJ would have taken them with Shefflin taking the nearer one, so... Resting on Chaff's shoulders today. Cha dropping this one in. Goalkeeper Liam Donahoe has left it slip through his fingers. And the ball is in the net. All the way from midfield. From a simple free. That really should have been batted out. Liam Dunahu here going up for it and just off the tips of his fingertip, fingertips under the crossbar and into the net. Here's Henry Shefflin. Hitting this on the left and sending it over the bar. That's his first point from play. Puck out by Liam Dunahoe. Comes down for his Alan Kearns. Dispossessed by Charles Patrick. John Tennyson. Gone past the goal by 45. Lays it for his Eddie Brennan. Tests out the goalkeeper and Liam Dunahoe did very well. It was an awful ball for any goalkeeper, skidding off the surface. And there's a certain nervousness in that Galway defence at the moment and uh, a little bit of worry as well as Henry Shefflin scores his sixth point. And at the moment, you'd have to say that Galway are in deep trouble in around the midfield area and particularly at left half back. Well, I think... Uh, Again, from a source I have in Kilkenny, they are aware that Galway adopted a man-marking approach last year, and it certainly worked for them, and they were very determined to make sure it didn't happen this year. Goal. Here's a chance. Goal coming up, yes! 
Aidan Fogarty from the Emeralds Club in Erlingford didn't start the Leinster final the depth of talent in Kilkenny is shown it looks to me that this is a, a pre-plan by Kilkenny they're moving their forward line all around the place Owen Larkin's now at centre forward coming for the full forward and it's very very hard to you know to know what to do with that and make changes to counteract it Henry Shefflin is still residing at right half forward having a shot and it's sending it over the bar Tony O'Gregan could do nothing about it now on his seventh point and if you're interested in statistics that's four points from play three points from freeze Henry Shefflin underneath it without a hurley lays it off chance here of another score and that looks good no it doesn't yes it does Owen Larkin sending that one over the bar down far as Eddie Brennan who's now well we really don't know where they're playing at the moment Comerford now seems to be gone back in full forward with Eddie Brennan on the way this is Owen Larkin needs a little bit of help there are plenty of Galway defenders there Larkin kicks it forward more danger for Galway here and that is over the bar off the stick of Martin Comerford Fergal Healy did very well under pressure gets it for as Alan Kearns. Healy is on the ground, a little bit injured. I'm pretty sure just off screen at the moment. Damien Hayes continues to work hard, feeds Ger Farher, and that's over the bar. I think this was the belt here though, that Fergal Healy got and he took a heavy knock and he, in fairness to him he played on there before, before he went down, he took a, a bad knock there. Breaking ball. Comes down once more to Owen Larkin. Cha as Patrick calls for it, far side. And Cha raises another white flag. That's a goal and two points now. James Cha as Patrick. Holly Canning needing the help of Damien Joyce. Feeds Derek Hardiman. Good ball. Well gathered by Eugene Truman. It's there for Galway. And let's just watch this again. As this ball broke down for Eugene Clunan, great catch inside. Ball came out here, and it was, in fact, Niall Healy who rattled the back of the net. Good goal. Alan Kearns trying to uh, knock it down. Once again, Galway have uh, possession. This one is floating more accurately over the crossbar off the stick of David Tierney. Yeah, he's done well, Martin, since he's come in. You know, lovely, simple point off his hurl there. Oh, there's a pull there by Derek Ling, and Derek Hardiman saw it as well. And uh, certainly, Ling could be in trouble here if the linesman spotted it. It's uh, Johnny Ryan from Tipperary. Brian Cody immediately having a word with the linesman. And <laughs> off camera, Brian Cody is having a debate with the linesman, but the referee has uh, called Derek Ling aside. And there's a yellow card, and there's more to follow. Wasn't that malicious, you know, if it's down no, low on no, the leg, no. but, you know, a yellow card offence, and it's silly from his point of view. Absolutely. Backfires Eddie Brennan. Nice flick back, beautiful. Where's JJ Delaney? Crossfield ball for Martin Comerford. Point on its way, straight over the crossbar for Martin Comerford, his second of this quarter final. Simple hurling, two diagonal balls, you can't do anything about that. No soft freeze being given here. Damien Joyce. Back for Derek Hardiman. Go, Hickey, go! Sprays it over to the far side towards uh, Eugene Clunan. Go, 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 That's not a bad ball. Tierney's underneath it. <laughs> David Tierney with a goal and two points since he's been introduced. And there'll be no question mark, surely, why he wasn't started, because this is the point that you and I have been talking about, that when it comes to the big games, when the real crunch arrives, you have to have the players that have done it in the past. 
now. Let's see what they're made of. Here's Ger Farraher. Gone inside is Alan Kearns. Wanted it quickly and gets it into the space. Two Kilkenny players come across. Noel Hickey says, I'll deal with him. Alan Kearns looking around. They try to open up another opportunity here. Here's Niall Healy. Scored three last year. Leaves it off to Clunan. Clunan going for a goal. Well, Hump tries again. Saved by McGarry. And the ball is in the net. They're on a rock and roll journey here, Goldwell. Yeah, Kilkenny are arguing it was in the square. And the free, free out has been given and Marty the, for a square ball. And he is, it is a square ball. It is a square ball. Here's Niall Healy. Hayes is to his uh, right. This is Damien. Difficult angle. Gets inside the defender. Gets inside the second. Flicks it inside. Arrives a little bit slow, but it's there. This time it's inside the large rectangle. And yes, the referee gives him a penalty. Earl Wade was the uh, player that was brought down. Here's Clunan. Goal for Goldman. Still one of the best free takers in the country. And even if Kilkenny win this All Ireland quarter final, they won't be too happy with that scoreline of conceding three goals in 12. And Galway are fighting for their lives here, for their very survival, and they're coming at Kilkenny. They know they need scores. Here's Hayes, and there's another point. And Brian Cody is not that happy. Three uh, Kilkenny uh, players go after him, two primarily. Hayes is brought to ground, and that's going to be a free in for Galway. And perhaps now they can create a goal scoring opportunity, but time is running out for them, I'm afraid. Here's Clunan, drives it in. Saved and out for a 65. Galway made a crazy decision a couple of years ago not to go into Leinster and that's going to backfire and they have to go into Leinster and start getting more competitive matches um, because they're arriving on this scene and they don't know what you never know what to expect from them Turkle and Hyde performance it's uh, all over for Galway their championship run has come to an end 2.22 for Kilkenny 3.14 for Galway Limerick were the most wounded of the quarter finalists after a really encouraging league campaign under manager and former playing legend Joe McKenna, the team had stumbled badly against Tipperary. Worse was to follow, with a 17-point trimming from neighbours Clare. McKenna resigned, and another former star, Richie Bennis, took up the reins and negotiated safe passage through the qualifiers. The challenge, though, could hardly have been more daunting. Champions and All-Ireland favourites, Cork. Cork trying to get themselves into an attacking position here with Neil Ronan from Bally Hay. Useful shot from Ronan and it draws the opening flag. Just over a minute gone, Neil Ronan puts Cork into the lead, starting his first championship match for 14 months, the last time it was here against Waterford, this time against Limerick. He gets the opening score and Cork are off to a flyer. Pressure on the Cork defence, and straight away that's from Conor Fitzgerald, and it's put over the bar and the equaliser. Very good return for Conor Fitzgerald, the Adair man. The referee is coming out to have words now with TJ Ryan. Calling the Limerick captain to himself, and then John Gardner being called. Yeah, it could be a yellow card for a player here. In the big game for Eamon Morris, well, you know, from Dublin, Jerry. Like, this would be a huge occasion for him, so he's going to lay down the law early and he's, he's dead right. So that's a couple of yellow cards handed out. Just three minutes into the game there. Three, goodness me. And it's Hickey coming across, first touch not good. Leaves it there for Ben O'Connor. The defence could open up here for Ben O'Connor. Ben coming through, he had support player. Corcoran is available over his right shoulder. Miss hit somewhat. Brian Corcoran chasing after it, keeping it in play here. Timmy McCarthy an option. Brian making an angle for himself. That's a good shot and that's over. Brian Corcoran, the Aaron's own player, getting his first point of the match. In the puck out, raining down on top of O'Halpine. 
Curran going there as well, Murphy, but it comes to Niall Moore and back in the team. Three court players going for the one ball. Barry Foley sweeping it across towards Tony Ryan, 45 metres out. Looking for a loose player, he's got TJ Ryan here. There's a point on, and TJ has put it inside the left-hand post and over the bar. He's got a yellow card, he's got a point as well, and it's five points to four. It's Niall Moran. First time in towards a shot to see, trying to break it against Murphy on his hands and knees. He's got through, trying to get in there, trying to swing his stick. Good stop initially, and that ball has gone up and over the bar. Could have been a goal. Well stopped by Donald O'Cusack, but the credit will go to Andrew O'Shaughnessy, and that's his second point. It was a really dangerous moment here. Did well, and a very good stop. Level game after 25 minutes. Ben O'Connor trying to steal a march there. On Hickey, does well, gets a shot in and puts it over the bar. It's Ben's first score of the match, and everybody in the inside forward line now has contributed to the scores. John Gardner. The style that you're familiar with. The clever hand pass to space. Tom Kenny taking it, breezing away from the challenges and putting it over the bar. Two players involved, Kenny with the final execution. And the point has been made, of course, that Cork's half-forward line don't score an awful lot, but their midfielders more than make up for it. Touchdown by Mike O'Brien. Pressure on Brian Murphy, spooned it out there as far as John Gardner. This time on his left-hand side. Work for Joe Dean to do to keep it in play. A collision of Limerick players. Joe without his hurley. Hand pass down as far as Niall McCarthy on his right side. It's a good side and it's over. First for Niall McCarthy. So now five of the six forwards have scored. Ronan Curran up with the left hand, cleverly down. Great skill, lovely hurling. Holly Moran coming across here, he's injured himself, play continues. It's, uh, Neil Ronan having another one from distance, showing he's not just a fellow you can bring on when the team is in a crisis. He can start matches and he's now put over his third point. Niall Moran, let's fly. David O'Sullivan had a good first half. We saw very little of Brian Begley. Comes out to John Gardner. Out here once again towards Ronan Curran. Limbrick for whom Donald O'Grady has come in to the half-forward line. Pressure on here with Ben O'Connor. Ben shortening the grip on the stick and putting it over the bar and Cork at the first point of the second half. And it's Ben O'Connor who's got two points from two shots on the target. Just like old times for Ben. And it's 12 points to six. Batted out by O'Sullivan once again, comes straight to Niall Moran. Going way out to make an angle for himself. Well, he made the angle, Wait. but can't. Yes, he can, he can finish it. It's over the bar and it's a second for Niall Moran. Shonago Halpine, momentarily unmarked. He gives him a chance to get it in towards Dean, bounces off rail, comes straight there towards Niall McCarthy. He's got a point so far. Ball runs loose to Joe Dean once again, stepping out of trouble. Back towards Jerry O'Connor, has yet to score. And that one has gone over the bar. Cork's midfielders between them have got three points out of that tally of 13 so far, and it's back to a six-point game. Mike O'Brien trying to excite the crowd from Limerick, trying to get something here, and he's put it over the bar. First for Mike O'Brien. Good score. Yeah, he's a great wholehearted player, uh, Jerry. You know, took the ball, not the most uh, maybe stylish, but he took it straight down the middle when they needed a score, and uh, a great score now for Limerick. And he's trying to urge on the crowd here as well now off the, off the ball. Beautiful pick up there. Breaks free once again from the shackles. Back to John Gardner. It comes loose. Conor Fitzgerald, some 45 metres out, and he's put it over the bar. Is the game turning late on? It's 15 points to 11. Cork have dominated, but Limerick have been plucky.
down once again towards Andrew O'Shaughnessy, away from Dermot O'Sullivan, comes to Mulcahy. Limerick with as many chances created in the minutes of the second half as they did in the entire first half, as that ball ricochets high, lands over the bar! Pat Tobin again! That's his second! Three points the margin. Champions now being put to the pin of their collar against Limerick, who have got renewed heart, and Seamus Hickey takes it out here. Trying to go by Gardner, Hickey again, meandering this way and that, looking for a support player. That player is Niall Moran, he's scored two so far. He's got a third! Is the shock of the year on? It's 15-13. The 10 to 1 outsiders are right back in the hunt. The champions having a right scare at this point in the game. Back here once again, Donal O'Grady excelling in the second half since his introduction. Niall Moran turning around, going this way and that. Shologo Halpin's in pursuit. It's still Niall Moran. Slightly off balance on the 45 metre line. That's unbelievable! That's over the bar and Moran has cracked over his fourth. And it's 15-14. Shologo Halpin, very dramatic finale here. Ben O'Connor, whose team were ahead 11-6 at half time, and he's put it over the bar. And that's Ben's fifth point. Is that now finally enough to see off the challenge of Limerick? Mike O'Brien, great ball in here to Tobin. Couldn't get the stick to it, but it's a shock to see. Will he become the hero? Comes out again here. Mark Keane now, and that's over the bar. 18-17. Mark Keane, another score for Limerick. It bounces around awkwardly in there. Comes back to Niall McCarthy, his team ahead by a point. They're looking for something extra. He's got it! Niall McCarthy is hit over his second. A crucial score. 30 seconds to go, and it's 19-17. All the way down towards the half-forward line of Limerick, and they have it again with Mike O'Brien. Now they need a goal. O'Brien hitting it high, and that's over the bar. It's his second not quite enough yet, but there's still a few seconds to play. 19 to 18. But where's the victory to go? The final whistle, and the champions are still the champions. They're in the semi final. They'd be put to the pin of their collar to win a 12th consecutive match in the championship. The final score Cork 19 points. Limerick 18, Cork are in the semis. The battling response from a beleaguered Limerick that Cork survived by their fingertips was an inspiration for all hurling underdogs. Another county seeking redemption was Wexford after their mauling by Kilkenny in the Leinster final. Opponents Clare had recovered well from provincial defeat against Cork and steamed through their qualifiers, eyes firmly fixed on at least the semi-finals. Clare won the toss and are playing from left to right. Coming through is Tony Carmody, flicks it forward and sends it over the bar. Puck out is over to the far side. This is Owen Quigley. Wexford in their uh, alternative strip. This goes down for us, Tony Griffin. Stopped by Doc O'Connor. Alan Markham. Difficult enough angle. The crowd respond at the far side and sends that over the bar. Rory McCarthy. Sweet hurler. And that is a sweet ball. And it runs on first Davy Fitzgerald. Stephen Doyle couldn't control it. Unfortunately, Jerry O'Grady tumbles. 
that's going to be a sideline ball for Wexford. Ball inside towards uh, Doyle once more. Not a great one, did well. Was firm in the challenge, got inside the clear cover. Bearing down on David Fitz, takes a shot, he doesn't connect properly. And I don't think uh, Paul Beelan, the Wexford football manager, will be calling up Stephen Doyle to the football squad after this. This well, was a goal-scoring opportunity. Great credit to Colin Lynch, and I think he may have just interfered with his foot there. Mavericks catch by Declan Ruth. Lays it off as uh, Rory McCarthy. Good ball inside towards Rory Jacob. Lohan is there once more. The hurley uh, of Lohan is now broken in two, which is rather a regular occurrence. Here's Tony Carmody hitting on the left and hitting it over the bar. Carmody is on a roll here. Ball inside uh, towards Markham. And he didn't get it the first time, but he got it the second time. Quinn gives it back to Markham. Shot not past the rule there. Nice ball inside for Jim and McMahon. Give him a little bit of space. Going in on top of him is Pete Rossiter. This is good play by McMahon. Difficult angle. Oh, smashing goal. Look at this. It was his first cousin that set him up, Alan Markham. He got inside, but it was a great shot to beat a quality goalkeeper like Damien Fitzhenry. The Kilmele man will get a huge psychological boost from this. Puck out, comes straight down for us, Michael Doyle, making his very first competitive appearance for Wexford. What a place to make it, Rory McCarthy. First time control, not great. Second time control is excellent, and the finish is not... Yes, it is. It looked like it was going wide, but Rory McCarthy responds with a point. Frank Lohan just got a touch to it. Stephen Doyle is without a hurling. Comes for as Jerry Quinn. Lashes it down, and it's a great ball in towards Markham. Where was the Wexford defence here? Markham lays it off as Griffin. There's a chance here of a goal. Shot over the bar. Tony Griffin's first point, but to be honest, there was a goal-scoring opportunity here for the banner. Jerry Quinn. Dropping this in towards Tony Griffin, nice turn, good score. Second point. Jerry Quinn, lovely uh, interception and uh, dispossession there by Quinn. Great heart to Claire, that's good play. Lovely play by Claire. First time pull in the air by Colin Lynch. And the crowd here in Croke Park will love it when they see that uh, overhead pull. Don't see enough of it in the modern game. Alan Markham leaves it for Gilly. Good block down by left corner back and full back this afternoon, Keith Rossiter. Pass inside for his Griffin was not a great one. Comes for his Gilly again, steadies himself and puts it over the bar. Second point for Niall Gilligan. Up towards Alan Markham. Keith Rossiter is there for Wexford with two clear lads around him. Here's Tony Griffin. Dahi O'Connell to his left. Player available to the right, but Griffin didn't see him. And that was Niall Gilligan. And there was goal opportunities left and right. But Griffin went for his point, and that's his fourth of the afternoon. Twelve points between the teams. Another testing ball for the clear defence. Knocked away by Frank Lohan. Jerry Quinn trying to control it. Here's a chance for Paul Codd trying to get inside. The cover and it's a goal! Scored by Rory McCarthy! Well, maybe this game isn't over at all. Davy Fitz will be very, very disappointed, but it wasn't his fault. He couldn't be blamed for this. Paul Codd flung it inside and Rory McCarthy pulled in it first time. Maybe, just maybe, Wexford have the fire in their bellies to come back into this game. Just confirmation there, Fergal Lynch is on for Tony Griffin in the Clare full forward line. There's a good ball in towards Markham. Oh! Don't know if that was Damien Fitzhenry or the crossbar, we'll have to check that, but uh, it still was a rasper of a shot from Alan Markham. This is Fergal Lynch. Getting it inside for his Dylan McMahon, getting it across, and that's uh, gone over the bar.
batted down by David O'Connor in towards uh, Rory Jacob. Good skillful hurler, and he judges this inch perfect. Second point. So many of these uh, young Clare players getting the experience of Croke Park, and from that perspective, Anthony Daly and his co-selectors absolutely correct as Tony Carmody goes for his first point in this second half. That's five points for Tony Carmody from play. And easily now, along with Tony Griffin, remains the uh, top scorer for Clare. Here's a chance for Paul Codd. Doesn't come up for him, comes across the face of the goal! Des Magnus here, steadying himself and takes his point for his second point. Not bad for a substitute. Good hurler, this Des Magnus, by the way. You're going to hear a lot more about him. Really, DeMarthy, when that ball came across and was, the pull was missed first, the only chance he had, he had to go for a goal from here. Ball out as far as uh, Brian O'Connell. And the 21 star this year, now established senior as far as Gilligan. And that's over the bar. He's now joined top scorer with Tony Griffin and Jim McMahon on five points. 126 for Clare, 114 for Wexford. And Wexford produced a goal to put a little bit of respectability on the scoreboard. Here's Rory Jacob. I have to try and work it in here. And he takes his point. And that's his third. As uh, Barry Nugent sends this in. And indeed, as I mentioned earlier, he's always worth a point or two, the air old man. It's a 12-point victory for Clare. Here in Croke Park, this quarter-final ended with Clare one goal at 27 points, Wexford 115. The best of the quarter-finals came last. Having gradually recovered to full strength after a bad run of injuries, Justin McCarthy's Waterford had looked comfortable moving through the qualifiers. Opponents Tipperary had run Cork close in the Munster final and had also beaten Waterford on the way to the provincial decider. Had Babs Keating's improving team come on sufficiently to meet Waterford's expected strong challenge? That's a good catch there by Dan Shanahan. Shanahan trying to get away, looking for the opening score. Nice, handy point for Waterford, who go into the lead straight away after just a minute. That's the start they wanted. Once again won by Paul Kelly on this occasion. Down to Francis Deveni, leaving it ahead here for John Carroll. Carroll coming inside the 20-metre line, going for it. What a goal by Carroll! In the second minute! John Carroll with his eighth goal in championship hurling got in behind Brian Phelan and let fly and there was absolutely nothing Clinton Hennessy could do about it wonderful shot what a start for Tipperary Waterford trying to win their own puck out here it's McGrath trying to bat it but it runs on kindly for Waterford for Prendergast this is Seamus Prendergast inside here towards McGrath and on McGrath putting it over the bar quick as you like nice point by the number 15 from Mount Sion Paul Kelly once again that's a huge one that's over the bar Paul Kelly pressure on Ken McGrath copes really well shows good awareness good strength in the clearance as well up towards Dan Shannon it's two against one there Waterford him up a man over Shanahan on his left hand side driving it well and right between the posts and that's a second for Dan Shanahan good score picked up here by John Carroll trying to make a bit of space for himself and again the ball has gone wide seven wides now they won't be happy with that. 
Well, Gerard always baffles me when you have a pair of one Kelly's uh, caliber inside at um, you know right corner forward, full forward. That if you're under pressure, like why not just slip the ball up the wing and um, you know let's see what develops from there because obviously John Carroll was nothing for him and he just hit the ball in as he wide. Clinton Hennessy trying to pick out and succeeding in picking out Michael Walsh. Out of is Dan Shanahan inside the 45-meter line. Lovely relaxed stroke. It's over the bar and the teams are level. Dan Shanahan with his third. He's got to take a bit more marking there from Hugh Maloney. Again, the Waterford halfbacks under some pressure here. David Fitzgerald coming out to help. Leaving it in. Kelly's in after him. Clinton Hennessy's there. Bato and Murphy was restraining the number 15 of Tipperary. And the referee quickly up with the action there. Here it is again. And you can see that the number two at his left arm around Kelly, bringing him down there, around about 13 metres out, just outside. Owen Kelly, would he possibly think about a goal at this stage? He's having a goal, and he's crashed it in! A goal in the 27th minute by Owen Kelly. Tipperary's second goal, and Owen Kelly has just got his 10th ever goal in championship hurling. Hugh Maloney, helped over there by Conor O'Mahony. John Milan now hasn't seen as much of the action as he would have wanted, I'm sure. He has now, and this one is inside the post, and it's over the bar. John Milan's first point. The teams are level. Quite a contest. From the puck out, once again, it's Ken McGrath. Michael Walsh playing it in precisely in towards Dan Shanahan in the centre. He's waiting for a penalty, and the referee finally blows. It is a penalty, and Waterford will have the last chance, it seems, of this first half. It's evenly poised right now. Here he is, a couple of players coming to him. And Paul Curran, take your pick, whoever got him in the end. Um, the only thing is um, their penalty taker, Paul Flynn, isn't on the field, and uh, it will be interesting to see who takes this. Well, it's Ken McGrath who's going to take it. We're in the 39th minute. Can he give Waterford the lead? Well, he should if he puts it over the bar. But will he go for a goal? Surely he'll try it. He's going for it, and it's saved, and it's over the bar, however, off the stick of Brendan Cummins. Final minute of drama at the end of the first half. That's Declan Prendergast coming across to take it, hitting it into space. Michael Welch doing enough. Down to the unmarked Owen McGrath. He's got support players around him, goes for himself to extend the lead, and he's put it over the bar. That's a third now for Owen McGrath. Well, he was unmarked, left all there to do what he wanted. Had support players around them, didn't need them. Tony Brown here. Down towards Owen McGrath. Comes back to Jack Kennedy again. He's an influence now at this stage. In towards Dan Shanahan. Taking on Eamon Corcoran. Shanahan in the clear. Shanahan scores! Down the man! Does it again! He scored against Tipperary in the Munster semi-final. He's done it again after 42 minutes of this game. And Dan Shanahan is in for his 10th championship goal. Getting by Eamon Corcoran. And the keeper hadn't a hope. A wonderful shot here by Dan Shanahan. And Waterford lead by five. Again, they work it out of midfield here. That's Eamon Corcoran. Huge one down. Comes that off Kelly. In there for Willie Ryan. And that's over the bar. What a time to get your first point of the match. An important contribution because Waterford's lead has been eaten into. And Tipper back to within two points of the men from the Dacia. Up towards John Carroll who hasn't even been able to build on the goal he scored in the early stages. Owen Kelly back in for Waterford, added to in there by Jack Kennedy. Inside towards Dan Shanahan, trying to jink this way, and that good shoulder there by Eamon Corcoran. It's Shanahan who stands his ground, and Shanahan who puts it over the bar. Dan Shanahan now with a goal and four points. What a contribution. Out to the unmarked Tony Brown. Nobody near him. That's gone 60, 70 metres down the park. Down towards Dan Shanahan, breaks away off his left hand. Coming in there to seize onto it. 
It's Paul Flynn, and Paul Flynn has put it over the bar. Announcing his arrival here within minutes of coming onto the park. It's John O'Brien back foraging. He's back in his own half back line. Four Waterford players are after him. Forced out over the sideline line ball. That's the kind of commitment, that's the kind of hunger that Waterford possess right now. And their belief in the calls. And I think a sense that they can do it this afternoon. They certainly never fear Tipperary. Beat them, of course, in Munster finals, Munster championship matches. Well, I think the game plan for Water from here on is should be to have Dan Shannon aside with maybe Paul Flynn and just hope that the breaks come off and then Paul will finish because obviously he'll be restricted by his injury. Initial good work by Eamon Cork, but under pressure again now from Michael Walsh from 45 metres out. A very important shot and a very important point. Michael Walsh. The puck out won again by a Waterford player, by Owen Kelly, ahead for Jack Kennedy, spotted the unmarked John Milan, who spots the target, and he drives it over. His third. It's looking like the Dacia. Brendan Cummins going short this time, as far as Hugh Maloney. Up towards John Carroll. Runs on instead here to Shane McGrath. Pursued there by Owen Kelly. And it's lost once again, lost to James Murray. Started the day on the bench, trying to win a free here. Not allowed, however, and it's Lark Orr, but the Tipperary captain coming in, and that has gone wide. Big disappointment for the Perilous Sarsfields player. 13 wides this afternoon so far after 58 and a half minutes. Doesn't make good reading. Lark Orr taking off, trying to make inroads. Hand pass into John Carroll, he started with a goal, looking to finish with one, he's got a second! It's not just over yet! In the 65th minute, John Carroll, helped in here by Lark Orbit, the defence unable to put a tackle in, and he beats the goalkeeper once again. Tipperary get their third goal against Waterford, and the lead is down to four points, and I make it five minutes left. Comes out once again to Tony Brown. Pursued. Brown still gets it in. Won once again back there by Paul Curran. Only out as far as Dan Shanahan. Dan Shanahan with the shot. Again, over the bar. A fifth for Dan Shanahan. Waterford trying to hold out. Ken McGrath trying to get it away. His team four points up. Critical lead. Hugh Maloney. Fouled, free in, they'll have to land it in the square, and Owen Kelly's racing out to take it. Well now, four between them, what would you do? Put it over the bar and hope for the best from the puck out? Or will you just lob it into the square? It's Kelly, he's going for it, and he's put it over. A goal and eight. Wonderful contribution, 11 points this afternoon. But 45 seconds left, Tip need to get it up the other end, Conor O'Mahony, Waterford need to hold out. Lark Corbett lets him run on. Dermot Fitzgerald hasn't scored so far. They need a goal to level up the match. Played in here towards Owen Kelly. Will he be the hero so many times he's been in the past? He's gone for it. And it's got a deflection. And it's gone for a 65. It was on its way before it was cut out. The danger averted here. And the stick of Ken McGrath getting in the way. We're into the third minute of stoppage time, it's lobbed into the mix, who'll win it? Waterford trying to get the ball out, Tip trying to get it in, back in once again, off Ken McGrath, supported in there, Tip again foraging, Waterford trying to feed the ball away, it's Michael Brickwoods trying to get it out further and further away from goal, pursued by Owen Kelly, they wait for the referee's whistle, there it is, Waterford have won, a wonderful quarter-final, what a match! It promised to be the game of the weekend, and so it was. There's a bit of a schmozzle in front of goal after all the tension spilled out in the end, but at the end of it all, it's handshakes because Waterford are in the semi-finals after a wonderful match at Grove Park, where the final score is Waterford 122, Tipperary 3 goals and 13.
On the way to winning the 2005 All-Ireland, Cork had to beat Waterford twice. This year, there would only be one shot. Big Dan Shannon had caused Cork a lot of trouble in the past and was again in top form. Despite the ongoing injury to captain Paul Flynn, many felt this could at last be Waterford's year. For the champions, shaken by the fright they got against Limerick, this would be a major challenge. Watford won the toss, playing from left to right in the first half, as they did in the quarter-final when they played against Tipperary here two weeks ago. Early stalemate there in the Cork half-back line and back to help out Jerry O'Connor inevitably. Clashing there immediately with Owen Kelly. Waterford there in numbers on their own half-back line, Tony Brown here. Wonderful warrior that he is, hooked by Jerry O'Connor. Waterford needing additional players to help out, Declan Prendergast coming. Coming across here now, Tom Kenny, trying to get it up onto the stick. Fair amount of rain earlier on here, Kenny setting off, 50 metres out from goal. He's got a support player, it's now McCarthy. First touch not great, immediately closed down and fouled, the referee has decided. Ken McGrath getting in and close, Owen Kelly was there as well. This was Niall McCarthy, couldn't quite take it up there, but anyway, Ken McGrath was in on top of him, and that'll be an opening free for Cork and for Joe Dean. Man from Killer is just inside the 45-metre line. On a still afternoon, this should be the opening score if he's on his game, and he is. First score going to Cork. Clinton Hennessy with the puck out. Huge one down. Intended for Seamus Prendergast. Runs loose there, Jack Kennedy trying to prod it on. It's knocked away out of danger there by Pat Mulcahy, the Cork captain, scrambling for it. A fair old scramble, and it's Timmy McCarthy here. Nobody on him. Chance of another score, and he's put it over the bar. The much maligned Timmy McCarthy from Castle Lions gets his first point of this match, but the marking was poor because James Murray was being held off Timmy McCarthy that time, and that was a great finish. Up as far as Owen Kelly. Quick look up here. It's Owen McGrath who's coming in. It's a hurry that was flying. And once again, Donald O'Cusack makes a magnificent catch. That's a great save by the goalkeeper. That's a great catch by James Murray. Left half back for Waterford. All the way up towards Dan Shanahan on his own. Momentarily, that is. Oh, he fumbled. Finally got set out as far as John Milan. Under pressure there from Brian Murphy. Loads and loads of pressure being exerted. Milan that time, and it's put a shot block down. It's going to be a 65. It's a game of very high intensity. What about that for a stop moments earlier by Donald O'Kiozak? He had Owen McGrath coming in on top of him. This was, this was not easy. This was terrific goalkeeping. Absolutely, John. And obviously with an injured hand. But what a passage to play. Brilliant catch by Donald O'Kiozak. Started it. Ken McGrath, Owen Kelly, all involved. John Milan. And I suppose a feature so far is the amount of players slipping around the place. Ken McGrath. Dropping it in short, and it's again stopped on the line. That was so dangerous. Donald O'Cusack again making a wonderful stop because he must have seen that very, very late indeed. That went all the way through. I think people were anticipating Ken McGraw would just lob it over the bar from the 65. But it dropped in there, and the goalkeeper got a very late view of this one. It was flying past the stick there, I think, of Pat Mulcahy. That's back once again there by Ben O'Connor this time. Pressure on Tom Feeney. Little fumble again there by Feeney. This time it's Brian Corcoran coming across. Players having difficulty with their first touch. Nicely into the clear here for Tom Kenny to hit from the angle and it's over the bar. Good score by Tom Kenny. Again, there's slip sliding over there, and it's certainly a major factor for players everywhere. Ken McGrath to hit this one from his own 65-metre line. Good connection this time, and that's on target. Second free taken by Ken McGrath. Down towards Neil Roman. Once again, it's won there by Declan Prendergast. Under ferocious pressure, 
out over the sideline, and Dickie Murphy, the linesman over there, signals that it's gone off the Waterford player. It's a cork line ball. Meanwhile, it's down to the full forward, to the inimitable Brian Corcoran, making an angle for himself, as he usually does so well and does so here. Great point by Brian Corcoran. It's almost his trademark at this stage. Picks it up towards the end line, makes his way out towards the 20-metre line, and a more favourable angle, hitting it off his left. Great stroke. Here's Jack Kennedy. Tricky playing conditions for the players. That's a bad ball. Straight to Sean or Halpin. Cork may benefit from that. All the way down towards Joe Dean. Got a stick to it. On towards Brian Corcoran. Trying to make a better angle for himself. Succeeds. Great shot. Two shots for Brian Corcoran. Two points for the man from Aaron's own. And it's five points to three. Neil Rowland trying to pick it up, he's got it. He takes off. Owen oh, Kelly after him, never runs in straight lines, zigging and zagging, difficult to contain. Breaks down here, Brian Corcoran's blocked this time, Tom Feeney sweeping it out, out only as far as the man wearing number 12, Neil Ronan, and that one has gone over the bar. That was the result of sheer persistence and good pressure play by the Cork forwards, refusing to yield to the, court, the uh, Waterford backs that time. When it came out here to the Ballyhay player, it was a relatively easy tap-over to make it 6-4. Maybe after the tense opening, it will now open up a little bit. Again, they're having difficulty holding their feet. It's a major concern for the management of both teams, but both partic particularly for the players. Shalago Halpin. Now McCarthy touching it down, Ben O'Connor anticipating. Has a support player outside, it's Timmy McCarthy. Looking for a second point and he's got it. Two from play for Timmy McCarthy. Really, really good play by the number 10. David O'Sullivan reaches for it, couldn't hold it. It's a line ball, the line ball will be to Waterford. Or is it? It's the other way around. Must have been a Waterford player who got it last. Oh, Halpin goes very short, dangerously so. Dan Shanahan, and Dan Shanahan has put it over the bar. A mistake by Shoto Halpin, a gift for Waterford for Dan Shanahan. He's the first player from Waterford to score from play, and the first forward, of course, to score as well for the Dacia. Tom Feeney coming out, he's commanding. Hurley's break, the Hurley that time of Brian Corcoran tried to block. Owen Murphy stepping out over the line, ball still in play. Brian Phelan couldn't take it, instead. It's a really good effort from some distance out, and there's a second for Neil Roman. And there'll be an additional one minute of playing time left at the end of the opening half. John Milan now cracking this one over the bar. His first. Waterford beginning to play in the forward line. That's two points now from play. That's the best they've produced so far. John Milan making it 8-7. We're in stoppage time. Yeah, Jared, again we'll open up, you know, a couple of good scores there from play, and let's hope for more of that now. Prendergast very strong in the area. Cusack's puck out. A couple of Waterford players there anticipating James Murray getting there. They'd love to go in level. Brian Phelan. Huge one in towards Dan Shanahan trying to break it. Milan's there anticipating. Awkward enough angle. The umpires look, it's good. They're level. Milan's got a second. It's 8 all. Pat Mulcahy then to take it for Cork. Stymie Waterford in their first attack of the second half. Up once again here towards Neil Ronan, stopped brilliantly. That's Brian Phelan settling to the task. James Murray now for Waterford, trying to set them in front in this game. That's a lovely little ball to McGrath. Owen oh, McGrath, and again, wonderful stop. Second time of Askey, it's still there, it's in! Owen oh, Kelly! First minute of the second half. 
Colin Kelly comes in for just his second ever goal in the championship. Watch the saves here from Owen McGrath, first of all. There's number one. Here's McGrath again. Stopped again. Twice, but banged in by Owen Kelly. And his only other goal was against Cork in the 2004 Munster final. Is that an omen? 1-8 to 8 points. Waterford have come up, fired out for the second half. Back they are, defending. Tony Brown, lashing it away down the field. Taken down by Pat Mulcahy with difficulty. Pressure applied by Jack Kennedy. Well, that's given Waterford a huge lift in such a tight match. It took them so long to get their first score from play. Didn't come until very late in that first half. And they're off again here with Seamus Prendergast. Denied the first time. Prendergast, second time of asking, drives it over the bar. Prendergast, who got four in the quarterfinal last year. Cork been asked questions. Niall McCarthy ready to respond, dropping it in towards Brian Corcoran. He scored many times before against Waterford. Ball comes out here, missed by a couple of players. Joe Dean taking it up here, 20 metres out. Back it comes towards Neil Ronan, and Neil Ronan puts it over the bar. We could be in for a great second half. The match that everybody has anticipated. This is the build-up to this latest score here. Joe Dean and Timmy McCarthy. Dean getting there first, but it'll knock back to Ronan, and that's his third of the day. Ronan Curran now. Driving it towards Timmy McCarthy, batted down there by James Murray, excelling at left half back, feeling under pressure there from Niall McCarthy. Timmy McCarthy now, the McCarthy brigade together. It's Timmy looking for another one, and that's over the bar. Three points by Timmy McCarthy. Probably the most misunderstood player on this core curling team over the last number of years. People wondered what did he do? He's showing them today. Pressure back down on the Cork half-backs near the sideline. Ronan Curran kicking it forward here. Dodging around is Jerry O'Connor. Michael Brick Walsh trying to get after him. It's O'Connor accelerating, driving forward and firing it over the bar. His first point. Cork's two midfielders have shared in the scoring. And Cork are about to make a change. And Cahal Nocton, a wing forward from Newton Shandrum, former minor, is coming on for Neil Ronan. This is up now towards the new man in, Cahal Nocton. Can he make a difference? What about that for a start? What about that for a point? Huge point by Cahal Nocton. And the margin is two points once again. This was a beauty. First touch. Pressure once again on the cork backs. Brian Murphy getting it out there to Sean O'Gohalpi. They swap it around there to David O'Sullivan. Up it comes once again towards Joe Dean, adding to it on towards Brian Corcoran. Slipping to the ground. Ken McGrath there trying to get primary possession. But Dean comes in again, keeping it away from Murphy. Keeping it inside to Nocton. He's got another chance. He's got a goal. In the 59th minute. What a substitution as Cork shoot into the lead. Joe Dean feeding it in here to another man with a golden helmet, with a golden touch. And that's his first goal in championship hurling. Two touches for Carl Nocton, and he's got a goal and a point. Is there a Waterford response yet? Ronan Curran left it. John Milan fires, and John Milan puts it over the bar. They're not finished just yet. Just over three minutes of the 70 still to play. Dan Shanahan, only one point in this game. A cross beautifully to McGrath to put the minimum between the teams with his first point. 67 minutes are gone. Cork were opened up. Look at the gaps. Look, there was nobody on McGrath, and that's over the bar. Outside here to Tom Kenny. Lobbed in, it's dropping short. Clinton Hennessy, the one thing that Cork didn't want. And now there's a chance for a counter-attack for the challengers. Repelled by Ronan Curran, magnificently at four Waterford players near him. Out to Shonago Halpine, back in once again towards Brian Corker and runs on. Clinton Hennessy, 68 and a half minutes are gone, bad ball out towards Dean. 
fouled by Ken McGrath. He's furious. He's absolutely incensed with that. It's given Cork an opportunity of having a free. This is the challenge again here. Brian Corcoran waits inside, but Joe Dean, I'm sure, will try and put it over the bar from here. It's not easy. But he's a master. And there were two minutes of additional time to play. It's 116 to 114. Gathered in well by Seamus Prendergast. And now a goal could win it for Waterford. John Moran firing it over the bar. It's back to a one-point game. Tony Brown, close down. Again, they close it down. The referee is calling for the ball. Is that it? No, it's not. No, it's not. There's still time. It's got to be a free. It's a free to Waterford. Look, this is what it's about now. John Allen, Dr. Con Murphy watch. Ken McGrath is 65 metres out from his own goal. We are over time. His side are a point behind. Will they get a draw? Will it land over the bar? It's hit the post and it's come out! What cork are hanging on there! They wait for the whistle. There is no whistle. The referee says play away. Ben O'Connor's back there. Brian Corcoran's back there at left corner back. Still 116 to 115. Waterford refusing to give up. The referee continuing to play the time. We've played over three minutes at this stage. Who's going to win it? It's taken out here in the end by Tom Kenny. Out it comes. Waterford looking at the ball back. The referee giving them the time. That's a high challenge there by Seamus Prendergast on Brian Murphy. That's the final whistle. It's all over. What an eventful game. Cork have shown the character, the skill, the commitment to come back and deny gallant Waterford, who were absolutely crestfallen. The champions win by 116 to 115. Some match. For 25 minutes of their quarter-final win over Galway, Kilkenny had played the best hurling seen so far in the Championship. Still, question marks remained after defensive lapses eroded a big early lead. Under manager Anthony Daly, Clare had finished each season strongly. Two years previously, they had very nearly ambushed a Kilkenny team fresh from annihilating Galway. Could history repeat itself? Here's the first test for the Clare defence. Comes all the way to Shepman! A goal for the Kilkenny Cats after a minute and 15 seconds. A hopping ball misjudged by the fullback Brian Lohan. Watch it here. It came in, seemed to fool the fullback, and pulled on by Henry Shefflin. Spectacular start by Kilkenny, and the worst start for the challengers. Great shot from Cody Kilkenny. Wonderful catch by Eddie Brennan. Chasing after him is uh, Jerry Quinn, and Brennan leaves him for dead. Going straight through, taking a shot off the crossbar. Lohan is there. Powering his way out, trying to lay it out uh, to somebody. Jonathan Clancy is back there for Clare. Back down towards Tennyson once more. Coming out to meet it this time is Tony Griffith. Trying to uh, put Clare on the scoreboard, and he succeeds in doing so. Man from Ballier, just outside Clare Castle, in the parish of Clare Castle, in fact, down in the Banner County. Gave up his studies in uh, Canada to concentrate on hurling this season. First point for the Banner. Breaking ball favours Kilkenny. Coming straight through the centre, dead straight in front of the pulse. Another fine point, this time scored by Derek Ling. So disappointed at being uh, sent off against Galway. Very focused on this one and determined to make amends. And they send that ball straight down on Tony Carmody and uh, John Tennyson. Alan Lynch is down injured. Remember, he came into this game uh, after a little bit of a doubt with his ankle ligament problem. Johnny McMahon floats this one in. Dangerous enough ball. And the ball is running in over the goal line. It's a goal for Clark. The batters are raised 
around Court Park, and the people up there rejoice. They're back in the game. Early, early days, but they needed this goal. Shawnee McMahon from St. Joseph's Tour Barefield dropped this one in. It rolled literally in, but Gilly, get, Gilly from Six Mile Bridge seemed to get the touch. Well, that's not to go down, Marty. has a very bad mistake by James O'Garry. There was no need for him to come out underneath that ball. Uh, it was being watched already by his, uh, by his full back. Got uh, this one in. Tony Griffin is inside, grabs it, hits it, miss hits it. And James McGarry is there, but it should have been a goal for Clare. So after that terrible start, the Clare man have settled. And I've noticed that Tony Griffin is drifting into full forward every chance he gets, and I think that should be the tactic. He's he's tall, he's strong, and he's a good hurler, and definitely he should have just knocked that ball past James McGarry, and that'll count as a bad miss, and uh, Clare might be looking for that one at the end of the game. Colin Lynch leaves it for Jerry Quick. Lynch is available if he needs a hand pass. Decides to drop it in towards Alan Markham, and Gilly! Through. It's against James McGarry, puts it, and a brilliant save by McGarry. Well, he more than made amends for that uh, previous error of judgment. Wonderful save by James McGarry. It was one against one there, and Gilly, like Tony Griffin, should really have rattled the back of the net. Here it comes, Gilly, big six-mile bridge man, often criticised in terms of not producing it on a big day, but uh, McGarry, to his credit, stood his ground. Yeah, he should have gone high with that one, Marty, you know, back the ball up high and the keeper has no chance, and that's two goal chances going to beg him by Clare. Colin Lynch drops it in, there's a chance here, and it's over the bar. Good combination play. Tony Griffin gets his second point. This ball sent in by Martin Hilliford, uh, good play by Frank Lohan, experienced player. Turns uh, in towards goal, but he knew all the time what he was doing. Jonathan Clancy from Clare Castle. A young magpie, vibrant, energetic, sending it in. Talon Markham from Kilmele, getting inside the cover. Steps over to Kilkenny man, brought to ground. The referee blows the whistle, and it's going to be a free in for Clare. But you have to say, Donald, that the weaknesses in that Kilkenny full backline are being exposed. There are chances falling Clare's way. That's three goal chances, clear goal chances that they've had, and... You know, normally you get them and you won't get them again, but clear on the ascendancy at the moment. That's the angle from uh, our camera in the Hill 16 end. Now Gilligan taps it over the bar for a goal and two points he has now contributed. Goal from play, two points from Fritz. Back there is James Rye from Greg Bally Callan. Nephew of Tom Ryle, the former Kilkenny PRO. Here's a chance for Comerford. And this hits it really, but it drops over the bar. First point of this All-Ireland semi-final for Martin Comerford from O'Loughlin Gales in Kilkenny City. Flipped on. Nice pick-up by Quick. Makes an angle for himself, and that is sailing over the crossbar. Wonderful score. Derek Quinn from Clare Castle. He was the top scorer in the uh, County Clare Club Championship last season. Mike Anthony Daly is a magpie from Clare Castle, where they certainly love their hurling. Alan Markham feeds his first cousin, Dimon McMahon. They did it in the quarter-final against Wexford, and McMahon scored a goal. He's along the edge line. James McGarry has to come off his goal line to lend assistance to his full-back line. Comes out first, Brian Hogan. Delivers it down the middle. Eddie Brennan is there. So, too, is Brian O'Connell. A slither glued to the hurling. There's no evil stick required when you have skill like Brennan. Flicks it inside, fires Martin Comerford. Turning onto his left and sending it over the crossbar. Great score by Kilkenny. Second point for Martin Comerford, and the sides are level for the third time after 29 minutes of play. Tommy Watch as Kilkenny come to grips with the clear challenge. This one is sent in by Henry Shefflin, and it's sailing very high and sent over the crossbar. One goal and five points for Henry Shefflin. Breaking ball. Comes back for Shawnee McMahon, who calls for it. Lays it off low and fast for Tony Carmody. Goes for the long ball. Oh, what a puck! What a point by Tony Carmody. He scored five points in the quarter-final, and Clare and Kilkenny are level for the fourth time. Conor Lynch and Henry Shefflin. 
comes down towards Aidan Fogarty. Lays it off to Shefflin once more. And as he's done so many times in the past, Shefflin is just a class apart. Oh, fabulous catch by Shawnee McMahon. Steps aside three Kilkenny players. Nice ball into the path of Dimon McMahon. Survives one. There's a chance here for McMahon. He goes it alone and he sends it over the bar. Showing leadership, agility, and indeed ability. What about this for a catch, though? Wonderful to watch. Pass back from Aidan Fogarty to James Ryle. Puts Ryle under pressure. Here is Eddie Brennan. Capable of taking on this clear defence. Seem to be sandwiched by two clear defenders, using the hand pass to great effect with Kenny. They go back for as James Chaff as Patrick, who lofts it high, drops it in. Lohan, Comerford, they're all underneath it, but it doesn't matter. It's over the bar. Cha is showing the way. Knocked forward by Jackie Tyrrell, doing a little better since he moved to left half back from right corner back. Being chased by Colin Lynch, flicking it inside, it's Eddie Brennan, Speedy Brennan, inside him, it's the corner forward, and that's a penalty, has to be. On McCormack was inside, and the Clare defence were cruelly exposed. And Marty, that came from, uh, you know, Brian Lowe won that ball on his own in a poor enough delivery because Colin Lynch was standing on his own in the middle of the field and gave uh, Kilkenny the counter-attack and, you know, ref might have left the play go on for a second or two because, um, you know, Owen was up very quickly when he got the ball there, right, and, uh, you know, he might have left the developer. It's now um, a penalty and Sheffield would probably go for the goal here. A wonderful sequence of play and at the end of it all, it means a penalty. Frank Lohan is being spoken to here, and another yellow card for him. That's two yellow cards in a row for two clear defenders. And meanwhile, it's Seamus Roach's uh, umpire team, Tommy Lonergan and PJ Condon, who are uh, on duty down at Hill 16, are having a word with uh, their referee, and it looks, like, uh, it looks like Eddie Brennan is being spoken to as well. But that little bit of uh, off-the-ball activity. Yellow card for him as well on its way. A vital moment in this All-Ireland semi-final after 49 minutes. And the referee has disallowed the penalty and has given it to a ball. Ball inside, shot, and the ball is in the net. Owen McCormack, super sad. And Kilkenny rejoice in Croke Park. The clear defence were caught ball-watching here. Well, I Let's think everybody seemed to be taken by surprise there, Marty, by the throw-in, and, uh, you know, the ball came back to McCormick, and, you know, so the ball sort of ricocheted off, and Davy Fitz was unsighted, maybe, and, uh, you know, Kilkenny would feel justified by that one. Possible to see it. Back break for Davy Fitz. Ball bypasses them all. Comes for Tony Griffin. A nice, easy style. Gets away from Tommy Walsh. Tommy Griffin has a shot, and cleared by James McGarry, who seemed to be hit after the ball by a Claremont, and the Kilkenny defence didn't like it. And uh, tempers are becoming quite frayed. The ball sent in by Tony Griffin. He beat Tommy Walsh here. Let's just see what happened. McGarry saved and then pulled in the air. Back out the field and then came to the follow through. Yellow card. Looks like for James McInerney. Changes on the uh, Clare side. I can tell you that uh, Declan O'Rourke is on and Pat Vaughan is on. Jonathan Clancy has gone off. And uh, we'll tell you about uh, the, the next one in just a moment. Uh, the other change. Looks like Dimon McMahon is the other player that's gone. And it's clear now that Niall Gilligan hits it with power and accuracy. Over the bar. Goal and three points. His first uh, point from play. And now there's only three points between the teams. Breaking ball, favours Derek Link. Tries to get it away, Declan O'Rourke is there. Here comes Cha again. Three clear lads around him, and it's a clear man that has it. That's Shawnee McMahon, whose grandmother, Kitty McMahon, 93 years of age, is in the stand here. She has three grandchildren playing. Dermot McMahon, Shawnee McMahon, and Alan Markham. Declan O'Rourke is fouled, and it's a free end for the banner.
Niall Gilligan with the free. An important uh, opportunity, but unfortunately Gilly has sent it to the left and wide. Derek Ling snaps at the loose breaking ball, steps away from Pat Vaughan. Half blocked by Shawnee McMahon, but it comes into the path of Henry Shefflin. Give a little bit of space in front of the goals. He knows where the goal falls are in Croke Park. Henry Shefflin makes it a goal and nine points. Clare, chase and pursue. Once again, does Ryan. And he leaves it to Chaffis Patrick. Lays it out for his Jackie Turr. Swings it onto his left. Testing ball for Frank Lohan. And it's Kilkenny that have it. They're edging their way a little bit closer. Referee blows the whistle and it is a penalty. It was almost like it was in slow motion there. How would you advise him to do? Well, he's, he, you know, he's an next looker from his demeanor. I'd say he's going to go for it. Here he comes. Shefflin drives it over the crossbar. That's a goal and 11 points Henry Shefflin has scored out of that 217. James Ryle busting his way forward. He's certainly been impressive at uh, right half back. He gives that ball away. Picked up, however, by Richie Power. Good to see Richie back in the action after a, a long injury. Pumps it into the corner. Frank Lohan and Eddie Brennan here tussle it. Nice skill again by Eddie Brennan. And the referee has blown his whistle here. He's going to have a word, I think, with the Kilkenny man. Or is it Frank Lohan? And Frank Lohan has seen a yellow card already. And there's a second and there's a red. Referee has blown the full-time whistle. It was an intriguing contest up to about the 65th minute. And once Kilkenny got a grip, well then, there was only going to be one master. It's full-time score here in Croke Park. Kilkenny, two goals and 21 points. Clare, one goal and 16. There was little doubt that the two best teams had reached the final. Cork, unflappable in a series of narrow escapes, patiently imposing their well-practiced game plan. And Kilkenny, invigorated by new talent and plundering big scores. A tight contest was expected, but the strong consensus was that the champions would prevail. There was further edge to the final though. Two years previously, Cork had stopped Kilkenny completing their own three in a row, and Brian Cody's team were determined to take revenge but they had been unfortunate with injuries. 2003 Hurler of the Year JJ Delaney had damaged his cruciate and wouldn't play again this year, whereas John Tennyson, so impressive in his first season at centre-back, was struggling with a shoulder injury. Although Cork were waiting on the fitness of Neil Ronan, he wasn't a major concern. Both Tennyson and Ronan were past fit, and with all the cards on the table, it was time to play. Hurling's top two counties, at stake, a good deal of history and a lot of pride. Cork with the same starting 15, very, very little change about it for the last number of years. Indeed, 11 of these players have played in all three previous finals, including Jerry O'Connor, who came on as a sub to play in 2003. Neil Ronan's last All-Ireland final start was in 99, when Cork beat Kilkenny by a solitary point, while Brian Corcoran starts his fifth All-Ireland final. Mind you, one of those was in football, when Cork lost to Joe Brolly's Derry in 1993. Kilkenny have been hit hard with injuries to J.J. Delaney and Donica Cody. Michael Kamada comes in to play in his seventh All-Ireland final and slots into a full-back line that includes Noel Hickey in the centre and Jackie Tyrrell on his left. John Tennyson is recovered from a shoulder injury and plays at number six, while the one change in the forward line sees the promotion of Richie Power and the exclusion of Michael Rice. However, with the rotation system now favoured, Power could very well switch with Eddie Brennan even before the start of the match. Yeah, Joe, what I'm looking forward to today is who's going to be the unsung hero, you know? It's happened so often in Ireland finals. 
as some player there's nothing made about him before and he steps up it was Fergie 2 in 95 Timmy McCarthy in 99 who's it going to be today? The match is underway Henry Shefflin and Martin Coverford have switched positions straight away but we can expect changes aplenty as the game develops over the next 70 minutes of action pressure on the court backs immediately there in his hands and knees Pat Mulcahy foul was committed it's a free in to Kilkenny and a chance for them to take an early lead Henry Shefflin, two goals and 39 points in this year's championship match. Another one on his tally, first of the day here, and Kilkenny lead in the 118th All-Ireland Final. Ronan Curran to his left half-back, Sean O'Gohalpin. Under pressure, gets the ball in towards Brian Corcoran. Sun in the eyes of the Kilkenny backs. It bounces out there to John Tennyson. Great clearance by Tennyson. Tremendous noise, wonderful excitement and enthusiasm among the fans. Ronan Curran straight away, back down into the heart of the Kilkenny defence once again. That's a great catch by Neil Ronan. He's fouled, dragged down to the ground, and it's a free to cork and a chance to level up the scoring. Yeah, Ger, only one change, I think, there. You see, great catch, you're fouled there by John Tennyson, came in on top of Niall McCarthy. But just Neil Ronan and Ben O'Connor have switched. Ben O'Connor gone to top of the right and Neil Ronan left half. And practically all the Kilkenny forward line have changed around. You have Eddie Brennan in the right half, Martin Comfort at centre and Owen Larkin. And you have Richie Power, Henry Shefflin and Aidan Fogg at the inside. Joe Dean ready to hit this. Trying to level up the match in the third minute. That's on target. Nicely over the bar and the teams are level. Coming across here is John Tennyson. Seems to have solved the problem area of centre-half back for Kilkenny. The number of assured performances shaping up to Niall McCarthy there. And let's hope that common sense prevails or they're going to get two yellow cards very, very quickly by Barry Kelly, the match referee who's a school teacher in Burr in County Offaly. First Westmeath man ever to handle an All-Ireland hurling final. Great honour for Barry. Lots of tension. Quick lecture. Well, he's escaping without a booking, but I saw the notebook, so presumably that's a ticking per player. McGarry, big one in, dropping in dangerously. Owen Larkin was after it, but Delhi there first is Pat Mulcahy. The Newton Chandra man pursued in there by Henry Shefflin, pursued as well by Owen Larkin. And he is fouled. Or does he foul? He takes uh, three, three catches, there, yeah. yes. Caught the ball too many times, and it's another free in, and a chance for Kilkenny to go back in front again. Henry Shefflin, one point so far. Looking to make it two points to one. The angle is acute. And the shooting is accurate. Kilkenny lead again, two points to one. Kilkenny fans are coming here hoping to break up this Cork dominance in recent years. Remember, it was Cork who uh, unset unsettled their plans to win a three in a row back in 2004. How Kilkenny would like to turn the Rebels over this year. Will it happen? Derek Ling from Emeralds. Big one down into the corner there towards Aidan Fogarty. Goal to his credit in this year's championship so far. Getting away from Pat Mulcahy, causing problems. Ronan Kern was there as well. Fogarty hitting, and Fogarty puts it over the bar. That's a great point, and that will do his confidence. An awful lot of good. He'd scored a goal, but he hadn't scored a point in this year's championship to date. But that's now three points to one in this match, and only six and a half minutes are gone. Hand passed to the centre half back, Ronan Curran. Good ball, low and intelligently into Niall McCarthy, needed two touches, having a go from distance, that's good, that's a beauty! It's been his accolades heel in the past, that kind of distance shooting, but he's had a minute to think about it, he had a few seconds there, but he's made it three points to two, that was a super shot, once he got the ball up onto his hands, nobody close enough to him, good long-range shooting by the carry tool player, 3-2. Great catch, Sean O'Halpin, there was a foul there. Some holding, free to Cork. Roland Curran ready to hit this one. Playing today in his 22nd championship match. Again, well directed, Kilkenny slow off the blocks. Niall McCarthy getting away again. 
slipping on the ground, comes back towards Ben O'Connor. The angle shot from the man who got 1-7 in last year's final. That's his first of the day here, and the match level, three points apiece. Held on to again there by Martin Comerford, into the corner here. Always danger about when Eddie Brennan's in the action, and he's left it behind there to Sean Ogo Halpine. It's Eddie Brennan's third time facing Cork in a final. Back into the action again, come Tommy, came Tommy Walsh, across from left half back. The puck out's taken very quickly as Tommy gets away. And the referee has uh, stopped the Cork goalkeeper, and that's the first time in the match he has stopped him from taking the puck out too quickly. That's interesting. Delalogue's puck out. Great catch again by Niall McCarthy. He's turned it on with three superb interventions so far. Back to Dean over his left shoulder, swinging it inside and swinging it over the bar. And Joe Dean has got a second. And Cork, the champions, lead by four points to three. Owen Larkin coming onto it, running into traffic. Larkin looking for an outside player to take it away from him. That player is Aidan Fogarty's jersey was pulled back that time by Jerry O'Connor and it's going to be a free into Kilkenny and a chance to level it once again. Henry Shefflin from 30 metres out straight over the bar. Free for Henry Shefflin, all of them coming from freeze and it's four points apiece. Well, if there were a transfer market in hurling, Henry Shefflin, I think, would be top of most teams' list. Sure, the tactics around the puck out are amazing. Both Cork midfielders are right out on the wings, and Derek Ling, and especially Derek Ling, is staying back beside his half back line. He's not following them. So it's Cork. intriguing with Cusack trying to pick out the short term because he has to. Great pressure by Kilkenny being exerted this time. Comes up here, and that's swung beautifully over the bar by Henry Shefflin. He's got a fourth first from play, and he eases Kilkenny into the lead by five points to four. Decent ball over here towards Timmy McCarthy. Hasn't been involved so much in the opening 16 minutes. A little hand pass ahead is too far almost for Niall McCarthy, but somehow it's still in play. And Michael Cavan is able to go back and pick it up there for Kilkenny. Supported here by James Wilder, right half back, running into heavy play once again. And the referee saw a clash. It looked a 50 50 situation, but the referee Barry Kelly signals that it's going to be a free out to Kilkenny. So the man who will take this free from just outside his own 45 meters nine is Cha Fitzpatrick, still under 21. He'll be playing in the under 21 final next Sunday here in Croke Park against Tipperary. Lobbing it ahead here towards Eddie Brennan, who hasn't such a good record in finals against Cork. Martin Comerford has, and Martin Comerford fires it over the bar. Great score by Comerford, power packed play. Under 10 minutes to go to half-time. Tight first half. That puck out lands towards Jodine. Looking around for a support player, it's Jerry O'Connor coming through to try and tie it up at six apiece. Jerry O'Connor is first, all from the puck out. And the teams are level for the fourth time in this All-Ireland hurling final at Croke Park. Dean involved. Looking for Jerry O'Connor. There's always a runner coming through from midfield. It's either Kenny or O'Connor. Six all. Puck out again. Aimed towards Martin Comerford. Not for the first time. Breaks instead towards Richie Power. John Gardner. Keeping it away from Aidan Fogarty. Holding his footing. Striking it down. But only as far as Henry Shefflin looks up. Straight at the target, it's on target, it's over, and Kilkenny leads 7-6. Henry Shefflin's got a fifth. Two of them coming from play. Wonderful contribution, as always, by Henry Shefflin. But it was that slack clearance by John Gardner under no particular pressure. Straight to Shefflin, and he said thank you very much indeed. Away to Tom Kenny. Looking for reinforcements, it's John Gardner, the entire half-back line involved in the attack. Didn't produce a score at the other end, however, and that is just Cork's first wide of this first half, and it comes after 28 and a half minutes of play.
McGarry looking for Comerford again. This time he switches across to a right half forward. He gets there ahead of Sean O'Gohalpine, drops it in dangerously. Brennan's in there, bounces away from O'Sullivan, bounces around to Fogarty. He's got a goal! Aidan Fogarty gets his second goal in this championship, and he does so in the 29th minute. Kilkenny fans overjoyed by that. Is that to be the vital breakthrough in this game? Jerry, you'd expect Dermot O'Sullivan, you know, his physical strength ahead of Eddie Brennan, you'd expect him to easily win that ball, but bounce around the square and Fogarty, could he be the man today? That's the difference, an unsung player coming into the match. Jerry O'Connor getting away easily from Cha Fitzpatrick. Cha struggling to get after him. There's a partial block by Tommy Welch, who was brave and courageous, but it still gets to Brian Corcoran. Out in the angle, Noel Hickey's out there as well. Looking to release it here, as far as Ben O'Connor. Ben who switched out to left half back, having started at right corner forward. From outside the 45 metre line, that carries, it's all the way and it's over the bar. It's a two-point game, and Ben O'Connor has got a second for Cork. 1-7 to eight points. Well, that's come within a minute and a half of the uh, end of the opening 35. There'll be two minutes of stoppage time to be played, but Kilkenny 1-7, Cork eight points. Again, the pressure is on, and again it's Kilkenny who are winning these puckouts. Richie Power this time. Forward here towards Eddie Brennan, checking his stride. Back it comes to Henry Shefflin. Miss directs it this time. Miss hit it. Easy for Dermot O'Sullivan. Hoop there by Aidan Fogarty. Stopped in his tracks. Gets it back safely to Brian Murphy. Not a good clearance. It's a very bad clearance. And that's Derek Ling. And that's over the bar. And Cork really look all over the place at the back. They are very unsettled. The Kilkenny tactics of being in their face this afternoon are ha is having a very, very uneasing effect on the six players in defence. And there's Derek Ling in to benefit and put it over the bar. Straight to Ben O'Connor. Two men on him. Again, it's Jackie Turrell who's required. Comes out towards Ben O'Connor again. Held now by Jerry O'Connor. Inside towards Timmy McCarthy, hasn't scored so far. Niall McCarthy had, running into a couple of Kilkenny players, and James Wilde completing the clearance, out only as far as John Gardner. Gardner head down, typical Gardner, going for it and putting it over the bar. John Gardner's first, and the lead is down to two points, and we're three minutes into the second half. And there's going to be a change. Neil Ronan is going to come off, and Kieran Murphy, I think, yes, the man with the blue helmet, is going to come on. So a chance for him to come into the team now for his 16th championship appearance. Aidan Fogarty, who is starring in this contest. That's a big one, and that's over the bar. It looks like it's one of those days for Aidan Fogarty. A goal and two points. And now a goal between them again. Three shots at the target for Fogarty, the Emeralds player from Arlingford. Three scores. Kenny takes it, rolls it up there confidently, gets away from Derek Ling. Out it comes here to the flying Jerry O'Connor. He's got one point so far. And he's dispossessed by Ryle. Brilliant little tip away by James Ryle from Greg Bally Callum. Well, that's the kind of intervention that's almost worth a score because Jerry O'Connor was ready to strike this. In came Ryle. That is brilliant defending. Pat Mulcahy makes his way off. The core captain is replaced by Wayne Sherlock. What a long, long way to go in this match. We're in the 13th minute of the second half, and this is Char Fitzpatrick looking to keep the little gap between the teams, and Char Fitzpatrick scores his first point, coming out of midfield very decisively, and it's 1-10 to 10 points. There's that little gap the whole time. Whenever Cork get a point back, there's always somebody to step up for Kilkenny. Jerry O'Connor trying to step forward here, stopped again. That midfield area congested by Kilkenny players very successfully. Willie O'Dwyer again here, leaving it behind. Char Fitzpatrick surrounded by Cork players. Back it comes once again to a Kilkenny man. Richie Parr, the final piece of the jigsaw, having a go from distance and putting it over the bar. It's a very confident strike indeed by Kilkenny's Richie Power. First of the day, and he's opened up a four-point gap in this match. Good support play. 
good confidence strike from a huge distance out. Timmy McCarthy is now being replaced on the Cork team and coming in the hero for Cork in the semi-final victory over Waterford, the man with the gold helmet, Cahill Nocton. So not a good day for Timmy McCarthy and for many of the Cork players so far, trailing by four points. I make it about 11 and a half minutes still to play. The puck out, out as far as Niall McCarthy. It's going to take something special by the Rebels to win this one and win the three in a row. That may be the start by Ben O'Connor. That's his third. Three from three for Ben. One twelve for Kilkenny, 12 points for Cork. Derek Ling, busy as always in midfield. Huge one down to Henry Shefflin, who's drifted into full forward to put pressure on. Here's Eddie Brennan. Is this his moment? A little chip by Eddie Brennan. That's over the bar. He's waited patiently a long time. He's had a good season up to this game here. And Eddie Brennan knocks it over the bar in the 61st minute to stretch Kilkenny's lead. They're ahead by four points. Sean O'Gohalpine. They have nine minutes left to try and retain their title. Kilkenny to deny them. That's superb play at the back. Wonderful, strong, bustling play. Commanding work back there by Noel Hickey. Into the mix once again it comes. Cork put under pressure. Not for the first time. Aidan Fogarty striking. Aidan Fogarty has put this one over the bar. It's a dream match for Fogarty. A goal and three points. Well, Michael Dignan was mentioning days when players who are lesser stars, lesser heroes, suddenly become the man of the moment. Fogarty is that player. Well, Keane O'Connor is coming on. His uh, family steeped in the GAA. His father, Michael, from Glanmire, would be very proud to see his son come on. He replaces Kieran Murphy, another Glanmire player from SARS. Kieran Murphy from Aaron's Zone, or uh, Keane O'Connor rather from Aaron's Zone, but in the Glanmire area. Out it comes here to Henry Shefflin. Shefflin hitting it, and Shefflin putting it over. It's that kind of day. Very little going wrong for Kilkenny. There might have been doubts in the minds of the fans that they hadn't quite done enough at the end of the opening 35 minutes. Now they are turning it on. Up as far as Ben O'Connor. Inside towards Keon O'Connor, normally a half-back or cornerback. Played it left half forward at the start of the championship. Fed in here towards another club mate of his, Brian Corcoran. Corcoran looking for an outlet. It's Niall McCarthy. Kilkenny forcing him wide. Two men after him. Still he slips them. McCarthy looking to set up a goal for Cork. Ben O'Connor, he's got it! It's not over yet. It's a three-point game with four minutes left. Can Cork do it yet? In spite of everything, 67 minutes are gone on the clock. Niall McCarthy in for Ben O'Connor from the tightest of angles. He beats McGarry. It's a three-point game. Kilkenny 116, Cork 113. It continues. Ben can't take it. Joe Dean, McCarthy, they're getting it one another's way. Back there as well, John Tennyson trying to roll it up onto the stick. The substitute, Richie Mullally. Richie's first contributions is coming on seconds ago to get it out. We're in the 70th minute. We'll be looking to see how much stoppage time's going to be added on. John Gardner going for it. It's going left. It's gone wide. The margin is still three points in this, the 118th All Ireland hurling final. Two minutes of stoppage time, and we're into it now. Kilkenny, can they maintain their advantage? Can Cork get down the other end and score? A goal to tie it up. That's a chop down, that's got to be a free to Cork. Oh, it's dramatic. Every bit as dramatic as any of the recent matches between Cork and Kilkenny. And it uh, hots up quite considerably down there in front of the canal end goal. James Ryle and Niall McCarthy were just getting to know you particularly well. I can tell you Donal O'Cusick's come out to left half back to take it. That's a yellow card and it's for Niall McCarthy. Four yellow cards for Cork players. 30 seconds to go. Now remember what happened last week on the controversy about the extra time in that. 
that's floated in dangerously to the square went off Ryle's stick comes out here rolled up by Keane O'Connor trying to get it inside there Connor Cusack's there as well they get the ball and the referee blows his whistle but it's not the end by any means it's gone out over the end line Kilkenny will have the puck out theirs will be the possession Brian Cody's team regained the lead in the 15th minute of this match. They have held it since. We're in the 73rd minute. That lady, those fans are ready to cheer. James McGarry, Kilkenny, are they set to be the new champions? Cork will battle, still trying to get the ball back. Jerry O'Connor, they need to get a goal chance, they need to get the ball. O'Halpin wallops it forward. Dean in pursuit, so too Brian Corcoran. Corcoran with Noel Hickey. It won't roll up, it comes for Tennyson. We're into the third minute of stoppage time. All eyes on the referee, it's all over! And Kilkenny are the All-Ireland Hurling Champions for 2006! The Rebel treble has been foiled by a magnificent Kilkenny performance and Brian Cody has led Kilkenny to the top of the pile. They won the league. They won the Leinster Championship easily. And now, after a mighty battle against Cork, they have won the All-Ireland and they are champions for the 29th time. It was a wonderful, outstanding performance by Kilkenny. Cork, to their credit, battled the whole way. Dermot O'Sullivan had some troubles at the back, but then Cork were put on the back foot so often by the wonderful Kilkenny performance. Cork players absolutely crestfallen, dismayed. But it's Brian Cody's day, it's his team's day, it's James McGarry and the selectors there, Martin Fogarty and Michael Dempsey back. Only three points in it at the end. The full-time score at Croke Park, Kilkenny one goal and 16 points, Cork one goal and 13. It's a great honour for me to stand on the steps of Hogan Sand and accept the Lee McCarthy on behalf of the Gilkenny team and bring Lee McCarthy back home to the Marble City for the 29th time. We'll see you all home at Gilkenny tomorrow night to bring Lee McCarthy home. A subsequent All-Ireland Under-21 title proved that the Kilkenny production line is still rolling and they will be the team to beat in 2007. But already challenges are being set. Cork will have new management to succeed John Allen, who stepped down after two years. And, intriguingly in the West, charismatic former Clare manager Ger Nan has emerged from the ranks of punditry to manage the untapped potential of Galway. So already the stage is set for next year's championship. The drama has yet to be written, but one thing is certain, that hurling will continue to enthrall hundreds of thousands as this most ancient and historic of games continues to thrive in the modern world. And Kilkenny are the All-Ireland Hurling Champions for 2006!